Now on the big data side. Um, the idea here is big data without big changes, and we wrote it specifically that way because if you were to take this code on the left where I read in a CSV file, do some work to it, and then calculate some statistics on it, what if I wanted to do that on thousands of files? There's different ways you could approach that, but we've tried to make that easy. In terms of front end that code with a data store, again, this idea of you know you have a, a data store pointing to a collection of files. In this case, it's going to point to this directory called pump data. And any, any CSV file in that directory will be represented. We're going to make the output of that data store tall, go through our analytics or processing of the data, and then bring that information back. And we'll talk through this in a moment. But the idea is that when you're working with big data sets, you shouldn't have to fundamentally change all your code. And that's what we've strived to do here. This is really underpinned and kind of enabled by this new data type called a tall array. So tall arrays are designed for data that doesn't fit into memory. And really, it's lots of rows of data. That's why we call it tall. More rows of data than will fit into memory. They look and feel just like normal MATLAB arrays. And we're really designed around exploration work and statistics and machine learning type work, not uh, specifically doing giant matrix multiplies. Okay, So want to keep that in mind. The way that it works is that uh, you'll have a data store representing some very large collection of data. Uh, MATLAB and the tall array will go ahead and break that data up into chunks that actually do fit into memory. And then they will work work their way through that data set in chunks one at a time. So basically just sliding through that data set one at a time until it gets to the end. That's that's the, the fundamental idea of how this works. Now, the really cool thing about this is that tall arrays work with parallel computing enabled by default. So under the hood, MATLAB is going to try to take whatever kind of resources you have if you have parallel computing toolbox and you have let's say four physical cores on your laptop it's going to run that same code you just saw uh, really in parallel against four four cores at once and in this this uh, picture i'm showing two cores but the more physical cores you throw at this thing the more parallel you're going to get and it's going to work through this and you can scale that idea out to even to a cluster where you have maybe hundreds of cores and each of those machines is going to be employed and cover that data set in a, in a much um, faster way because you have more resources working this. This scales out to Spark and Hadoop and works very well in that environment, um, but you're not limited to that. You certainly can, can do very good and interesting things on desktop machines with tall arrays. So let's take this specific example. Let's imagine we want to take um, a table, this tall table, TT, and do a few things here. So we want to go through and take the mean of the day of the month column of the table, the standard deviation of the day of the week column. We want to apply some fill missing and smooth data, so some of that pre-processing work. And we want to count the number of elements in the airtime column. So in order to do this, logically speaking, we have kind of three or maybe even four unique steps to go through. And that could be very expensive. It could be expensive in terms of time and compute resources if this data set were, were truly huge, imagine you know terabytes or even petabytes of data. So Tall under the hood tries to do some uh, dependency analysis to look through your code before it actually runs and do it in, the, in a very smart way and try to minimize the number of passes or trips through the data. And in this particular case, it can do it with two trips through the data. Okay, so what I've just shown is an example of how MATLAB tries to optimize the, the work it does with tall arrays so that you're not sitting around waiting forever to get, get your answer back. Uh, what about visualization? So when you're dealing with big data sets, visualization is difficult for sure. Um, it, it maybe it doesn't make sense to plot a billion points because it's going to look like a big blob on a piece of paper. And so we've overloaded uh, several of our plotting functions, as you can see here on the screen, to help you work with tall arrays. This includes things like histograms, uh, the plot function, the scatter function. And on the right hand side, we're showing how you can actually start to pan through this stuff in real time uh, to really get a sense of what your data is doing. We're not actually going to render all of it at once. We'll render the piece you care about um, as you work through this. And so this makes that idea of exploring big data sets tenable or even possible. So I talked about tall arrays in terms of importing with data stores and really you know, front-ending tolerates with data stores, I think, makes the most sense. You're not limited to that, but when, at least the work that I've done, that's, that's where people start. Uh, if, for, for example, or if for some reason you don't have the functionality you need for tolerates out of the box, 
we provide an infrastructure called Tall Transform and Tall Reduce that allows you to write your own custom functions and apply it against the Tall Arrays as the back end. So that's a kind of a, a custom you know, API you can jump right into. And then we've added a lot of support for custom write capabilities. So when you're, when you're dealing with these giant data sets, if you want to checkpoint them, you can do that right now. And some of the file types we support are text spreadsheets, custom write function, and now in 19B, Parquet write as well. So you can write your data out to Parquet files uh, right from the tolerate itself.